The advancement of technology over the last century has enabled us to create fantastic machines and do incredible feats. For example, it has enabled us to travel to the moon and to generate nuclear energy on Earth. The LHC, or Large Hadron Collider, is one of the most extraordinary machines ever developed by humans. Do you want to learn more about it and how it works? Watch this video and I'll explain. Hello and welcome to Z. Subscribe the channel for more scientific content. The Large Hadron Collider, or LHC, is a massive particle accelerator developed by CERN, the world's biggest particle physics laboratory, in the Geneva suburbs at the border between France and Switzerland. The LHC is an extraordinary machine, and with a radius of 27 kilometers, it is the world's largest collider. But what exactly is a collider? To examine the underlying structure of nature in depth, physicists must replicate conditions similar to those of the Big Bang. One method is to accelerate elementary particles to extremely high speeds, almost at the speed of light, then crash them together. This is exactly what a collider does. Scientists can discover new particles and expand our understanding of the universe by evaluating the results of these encounters. The LHC is round in form. Two beams of high-energy protons travel in opposite directions around its 27-kilometer circumference. These particles are accelerated to 100% of the speed of light in the collider. How is this accomplished? The major approach for accelerating particles is to employ radio frequency cavities, or RF cavities. In layman's terms, these are tubes located all along the collider that contain an electric field that changes direction on a regular basis. The LHC has 16 radio frequency cavities. When a particle with an electric charge is submerged in an electric field, it is accelerated in the same direction as the field. It will go in the other direction if it has a negative charge, such as an electron. This method would not work if the particle had no charge since the particle would not feel the effect of the electric field. When protons enter these cavities, an electric field is activated, causing the particles to accelerate in the desired direction. Because of the electric field, protons gain energy each time they enter a new RF cavity. After thousands of revolutions and thousands of entries into these voids, they eventually achieve a final speed that is nearly equal to the speed of light. However, this is insufficient to build a collider. In truth, particles generally travel straight rather than in a circle. Without any additional system, these protons would swiftly collide with the ring's walls. So, how do we maintain them on a circular path? Magnetic fields are used to accomplish this. Magnetic fields, unlike electric fields, do not accelerate charged particles, rather, they deflect them, causing them to shift direction. Strong magnets are utilized to deflect protons and keep them moving along the LHC circular ring. However, in order to generate magnetic fields strong enough to deflect these high-energy protons, scientists in the LHC must utilize specific magnets. These magnets are in the so-called superconducting state, which means they have essentially no electrical power loss. This is only possible by keeping them at extremely low temperatures, in this case, around minus 271 degrees. This is why they must be constantly chilled with liquid helium to achieve such severe temperatures. The magnetic fields created by these powerful magnets have an intensity of 8 Tesla. For comparison, the Earth's magnetic field has an intensity of 0.00004 Tesla. Scientists are able to keep the proton beams on their circular course thanks to the thousands of magnets installed all throughout the ring. Similarly, magnets are employed to squeeze the protons and maintain them collimated. Once the protons have been accelerated to the desired speed, it is time to collide them. Collisions between proton beams happen at four different spots along the ring. When the two beams collide, the protons break apart and hundreds of new particles are created. Scientists build massive detectors at these locations of collision to detect and identify them, as well as to learn new things about nature. 
Atlas, CMS, ALIS, and LHCB are the four major detectors. The most important are ATLAS and CMS, each of which serve various functions. The finding of the Higgs boson, the particle that gives mass to all others, in 2012 was one of these two experiments' most significant achievements. The ALICE experiment intends to explore a specific type of matter known as quark gluon plasma, whereas the LHCB experiment was designed to investigate why the amount of matter in the universe is substantially more than the amount of antimatter. However, don't imagine that these trials will be easy. In reality, the amount of data they must collect and then evaluate is astounding. At the LHC, over 1 billion collisions occur every second. Hundreds of particles are created in each of these collisions. As a result, recording all of the occurrences is unfeasible, otherwise, the CERN computing system would quickly run out of room, so, these detectors must select and record only the interesting events inside this pandemonium. Indeed, more than 99.99% .99 of the events created by a collision at the LHC are instantly eliminated, leaving only the remainder for investigation. Even with this system, the LHC records more than 1 million gigabytes of data every day on average. But how do scientists make use of this information? So far we've seen how proton beams clash in the LHC. But how are the collision generated data used? Hundreds of particles are created during each collision. Many of them, however, are not interesting to scientists. Their goal is to find new particles in this chaos. The detectors come in handy here since their sensitivity allows them to identify only the potentially interesting particles created at the impact point. Each of the four detectors is made up of numerous subdetectors, each of which serves a specific purpose. CMS, for example, has a tracker subsystem whose goal is to track the trajectory of the particles created by the collision. This tracker is made up of multiple silicon layers, and when a charged particle strikes one of them, a trace is left behind. It is feasible to recreate the particle's whole course from the collision location by checking all of the hits left by the particle on the levels of the tracker. The calorimeter is another CMS subdetector whose goal is to measure the energy released by the colliding particles. It is composed of unique crystals of a specific substance, lead tungstate. This substance emits a cascade of electrons and light when a particle travels through it. Scientists can deduce the particle's starting energy by measuring the amount of light produced. Scientists can get a wealth of information about the particles created in collisions thanks to these specialized subdetectors. What happens next? Finally, they analyze the data. The analysis's purpose can vary. One of the objectives could be the finding of a new particle, for example. This is accomplished by determining the correct signature of the hunted particle. In reality, because each type of particle has various attributes, different electric charge, different mass, it leaves a different trace in the detector's subsystems. In the calorimeter, for example, an electron emits a lot of light, whereas a neutron emits none. When scientists were looking for the Higgs boson, they understood exactly what this particle's signature was, since the theory predicted exactly how this particle would behave. However, it is not always easy to tell it apart from the trails of other known particles. The Higgs boson, for example, decays incredibly quickly, it breaks apart and produces new particles. Because this process is so quick and takes place so near to the collision point, when a Higgs boson is created, it decays before it reaches the detector. So how does one go about detecting it? The secret is that when the Higgs boson decays, it produces well-known and easily identifiable particles. The Higgs boson, for example, can sometimes decay into two photons. These photons have a very distinct profile since they leave no trace in the tracker, yet they emit a huge amount of light when they strike the calorimeter's crystals. If scientists wish to look for a Higgs boson that has decayed into two photons, they look for large signals produced in the calorimeter but no hits in the tracker. However, as you may expect, life is not that simple. 
In fact, a single proton-proton collision produces dozens of additional photons. Other particles created in the collision that can also decay into two photons must also be considered because these particles can mimic the Higgs boson signature. So, how do we tell them apart from the true signal of a Higgs boson? This is accomplished by imposing extra limits on the signature produced by the two photons. For example, the energy and direction of photons produced by the decay of a Higgs boson are generally different from those of photons produced directly at the point of collision, so these characteristics can be used to distinguish between photons produced by the decay of a Higgs boson and those that are not. Of course, this is an oversimplification. In reality, physicists must employ extremely complex algorithms to execute their analyses in order to find something interesting. Scientists are able to make fundamental discoveries about the universe thanks to all of these tools, even in the chaos of particles produced by collisions. One example is the discovery of the Higgs boson. The LHC has also provided many other observations that have been used to evaluate the validity of the standard model, which is currently the most comprehensive theory of physics that describes the particles that make up matter and the forces that act between them. However, this is not the end of the narrative because the LHC hopes to solve some of the most fundamental issues about our universe, such as what the nature of dark matter is. Why is there more matter in the universe than antimatter? Are there new natural forces that we are unaware of? To answer all of these questions, scientists will need to collect a lot more data, which is why the LHC will continue to run for a long time, with some important machine upgrades that will allow us to increase the energy of the collisions and hopefully observe new rare processes that we haven't seen before. The LHC's journey through knowledge has only just begun, and we anticipate many fresh and exciting discoveries in the future. Alright everyone, this video has come to an end, thanks for tuning in. Did you find the LHC fascinating? Do you want to learn more about colliders and how scientists utilize these massive equipment to learn more about the universe? Let me know in the comments, subscribe, and I'll see you on the channel next time.